Mark of the Mad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1949 French comedy Jean de Fête, or as it's translated into English, The Big Day. <laughs> thank you, well, thank you. I hope you've only heard good things about it. I am reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rate on Rotten Tomatoes. I will give them all a score of 1 to 10. After I review them all and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1927 movie era and now I'm at 1949 with Jean de Fête. This is the last movie of the 1940s and I apologize if I butcher the name of the movie or I butcher the actor. I'm really not good with other languages, so uh, apologize in advance. I mean nothing by it. Um, this movie has 100% fresh rating on Rotten Tomatoes from the critics and 83% fresh rating from the audience. It was written, directed, and stars Jacques Tati. And so when we first open up this movie, uh, we are shown a carnival that is coming into town. Uh, there is a gentleman who is helping set up this carnival, and he has some sort of uh, flirtatious love. I don't even want to say love triangle. He's flirting with this girl who uh, is in the town, but he, I believe he's also married as well. So uh, this is kind of a love story in this movie that never really uh, comes together. It never really cultivates in anything. It's just when we first see the movie, uh, he is kind of this guy who flirts with this girl. So he's setting up this carnival. Uh, it's this. It's big news in the city. It's a small town, very small town in like a rural city. And this carnival is like the big thing. This is the big day. This is, um, you know, where this small a sleepy town wakes up and they get to have fun and they get to really let their hair down. Um, we are then shown uh, Francois who's played by Jacques Tati. He is bicycling through this countryside delivering mail. Uh, he kind of stops and he like is swatting this bee around him for some reason. But when he gets to the town, he uh, narrowly escapes getting hit by a pole. He kind of goes off into a building and um, is able to escape it. And then later on in the movie, he will boast about how he uh, helped set up this carnival and how he nearly died by getting hit by a pole. <laughs> So I can tell early on that he is a, uh, I mean, having written, directed, and starring in this movie definitely gives me Buster Keaton vibes, and he is a, seems like he's an actor who likes a physical comedy like that. This is the first movie I've ever seen with him. I know there's at least one more movie with him um, about a holiday or something that comes up a couple more movies ahead. Um, but this, he, he does physical comedy, and he actually does it very well. There's a lot of scenes in this movie uh, where he's really funny. <laughs> um, there's specifically a scene later on where he is trying to mount his bike, but he keeps accidentally mounting a fence that's next to his bike. It's pretty. It's a pretty uh, clever scene. And I've, actually, I haven't seen this kind of physical comedy like he's doing since I saw like Buster Keaton movies um, in the 20s. So it's refreshing. I like the physical comedy. So anyway, he goes into town and he immediately takes charge. They ask him for his help, so he starts trying to. He starts uh, helping set up this carnival. Uh, he eventually is able to ha get them to work together, and he's able to get this carnival set up. Um, and then he then goes about his day del delivering the mail. Like, he has like telegrams and stuff that he has to send. So he goes about his day sending sending the mail. He then then the carnival comes to town, and uh, he partakes. He he stops delivering the mail for a little while. He partakes in some carnival games. There's a running gag in this movie. Well, not a running gag. There's two scenes in this movie that are also pretty funny where there's this guy who's cross-eyed and he's unable to like get this the spike into the ground because he keeps it in the wrong spot. So uh, Francois like ends up rigging it so that he can do it. And at the carnival, he ends up throwing the ball the wrong way because he's also cross-eyed. So, you know, um, 
those are really the only couple of scenes that are, uh, I wouldn't say they're set up to be funny, uh, but it's like the only returning gag that I saw in the movie, which I thought was really good. Uh, so he ends up getting the carnival set up. During the carnival, there's a showing of a uh, movie which depicts Americans and how Americans deliver the mail. Now they talk about how do Americans are delivering mail by planes and how uh, eventually they will have the mail delivery guy parachute into the town and <laughs> deliver the mail. They even show like an evil Knievel thing where the mailmen are on motorcycles riding through hoops of fire and <laughs> stuff like that. And uh, this gets the town in like a tizzy and they go up to Francois and they're like, why aren't you delivering the mail like this? Like if the Americans can do this, why can't you do this? So he gets it into his head that, yeah, you know, maybe I can be more efficient. Maybe I can be faster. So he asks the carnival, uh, the carnies, if he, they can help him deliver the mail faster. They set up this really funny scene on the merry-go-round where he's uh, trying to mount and dismount the bike quickly. And he ends up, uh, you know, once he dismounts the bike, he loses on the merry-go-round. So he has to go climb up the ladder and all these weird things on the merry-go-round that don't really belong there. Uh, he's trying to get back to the bike. It's, it's a pretty funny scene. Uh, I would say this is probably the funniest scene for me in the movie is where he's uh, going around this merry ground and trying to navigate it. Uh, but anyway, they set him up with a couple of different ways where he can get the mail faster, where he can mount the bike faster and get off the bike faster, and how he can use his uh, like mail carrier sash to get the mail out quicker. So they devise up some ways to do it. And then he goes about delivering the mail quickly. And um, I believe that is the end of the movie. It's just kind of him trying to deliver the mail quickly. And as he's doing it, he realizes that there are some issues where uh, maybe he's, uh, you know, cutting a little, cutting some corners to try to deliver this mail. Rapidity, rapidity. Go, Fimo. Allez, salut, salut. Allez, la supplété, ouais. Alors, vous voulez pas? Bon, ah ben, hop. Alors, where he, before, he was uh, much more personable. He was much more being able to stay and talk a while to these people, being able to, you know, help them out and fraternize with them. And, you know, he helped build the entire carnival while he was, uh, while he was delivering the mail. But now that he's trying to make it more efficient and more streamlined, he doesn't have that kind of time. Now he's just uh, delivering the mail quickly, no matter what it takes, no matter what he has to do, he's just delivering the mail. And that's basically the entire movie. All right, so what do I think of this movie? I'm gonna be 100% honest, don't, don't shoot the messenger quite yet, but I'll be 100% honest. When I first saw the movie, uh, I kind of went away thinking, you know, I don't really know what this movie's about. I don't really know who the audience for this movie is. Uh, I don't really know what they're trying to say. But then I watched this movie maybe two, two or three days ago, and as I've been thinking about it, I mean, I saw a couple other movies after I saw this one, but this one is the one I've been really thinking about. And I've been thinking about, you know, this movie actually does say a lot, and I just didn't catch it at first until I sat down and really started thinking about it. So uh, first of all, I think that this movie, when it comes to uh, showing what the Americans do, there's kind of like this idea, like this vision of what Americans do, because it's in this, this movie that they're watching, and it's in this, uh, you know, that they're watching at the carnival, there's this vision and there's this idea and what's told to them that the Americans can do that clearly is not correct. Now, uh, after the war, after World War II, like, uh, America was kind of on the front line of technology. So I really believe that they could have just fed anything to people and they probably would have believed it. But there's no way that, at least as, as far as I know, there's no way that a mail collector is going to drive through a hoop of fire. Uh, I mean, even today, mail deliverers aren't parachuting out of planes to deliver mail. Sure, they do, uh, you know, put deliver mail in mass on planes. You know, Amazon will deliver air mail to you the next day. But um, this, I mean, the idea of what they're putting into the head of people back then wasn't actually true. It was more of like a fantasy. Like this is what the fantasy of what we think uh, 
they're doing and what we think they could actually do. And uh, I think it just says a lot about what people thought about America after World War II and the kind of technologies that they were able to create and the kind of things that they were able to do. And then once you get to, and then once you get these processes streamlined like that, and once you get these processes up to date, uh, there really is less time and, and it's more automated, you know, and it shows at the end of the movie, there is there really is less time to be personable, to be, I remember um, when I was younger, you know, you would go to, I worked at a Hollywood video, you would go to a Hollywood video, you would rent a movie, you would talk to someone, you would ask them their opinions of the movies, you would ask them like what's popular, you know, you could strike up a conversation with someone working at a movie theater or at a Hollywood video, and you could really learn about what you should rent. But now everyone does it on Netflix and Netflix automates it and they tell you what you should rent and they tell you, uh, you know, what you might like based on what you've watched before. And it's less personal. Sure, it's more, uh, you know, it may be more streamlined and maybe the video, the movies that they recommend for you, it's correct. But, you know, you're not able to pick other people's brains. You're not able to really, you know, figure out what people like and figure out what people's opinions are as much as you used to because everything's more streamlined and automated now. And I feel like at the end of the movie, that is what we are being shown. That he is hurrying, he is racing, he's trying to get things done. Uh, at one point, he puts like a letter in a horse's tail because he's trying to just get out of there. And, uh, you know, this, this town where he is, you know, sort of like the Barney Fife of, of mail carriers, where he can just, you know, stroll along. He knows everyone in town. He can talk to them. Uh, that can kind of lose all of that in this in this process. Um, and you know, it also shows that uh, that a small town uh, like that, they deep down inside, they want this kind of automation. They want this kind of excitement because the fair is like a one day thing. It only comes in once a day and everyone goes and everyone has a great time. And maybe this is something that they want like every day. They want to uh, try to uh, make their lives become more like Americans and become more exciting and fast paced. And um, I don't know, like at the end of the movie, when I saw him doing this, I thought that he's probably not going to enjoy this job as much when he does it that way. And it's my opinion that maybe the townspeople won't feel like they're getting the kind of service that they're supposed to get because uh, they expect to, they're expected to reach a certain level of, of service and a, a certain level of, um, you know, pleasantness and politeness and, um, you know, and they're not going to get it anymore if this is how they uh, end up allowing their mail service to be. Uh, so I think like deep down inside that says something about automation and it says something about uh, you know just progressing uh, electronically at a progressing at a pace that maybe is too quick for them. Maybe they should you know take it a little bit slow and not try to go uh, all at once. Uh, that's what I got out of the movie. Now, this movie also deals with the pressures that someone has on them when a town or a people expect something out of them or when someone expects something out of you, uh, the pressures that you have on you. Uh, I just did the movie Late Spring, I just reviewed that, uh, where this woman had a huge pressure. She was 29 years old or 27 years old and she had all this pressure to marry and to move out of her parents' house and her dad's house and that was kind of what the movie was about, the pressures that she had on her and how they were unfair. Now this movie deals with the pressures that uh, Francois has on him because he uh, is used to this job. He's very good at his job and the town is just completely pressuring him to do this a certain way and to be like the Americans. And he ends up at first like uh, getting drunk and dealing very poorly with this um, pressure that he has. Uh, and then he's able to, you know, pull himself together and try to conform to what the people want, uh, even though maybe that's not what they're going to want. But it also has to do with pressures and the pressure that society puts on you. And even the pressures that like another another country puts on a society. I mean, if if, Ameri if they hadn't watched that American video and they didn't believe that they were supposed to conform and to be what America was and to try to get to that level, then there wouldn't be that pressure. So there's actually maybe they feel a pressure on themselves too. Like they're falling behind. Like uh, this is something that they need to do right away and do quick so they can uh, be just like America. So those are my thoughts on the movie. I thought the movie was good. Uh, I didn't think it was like the greatest movie that I've ever seen. I like the slapstick. I like the physical comedy that they have in the movie. Uh, the acting is really good. It's only like an hour and 27 minutes. So it's really, uh, it's over quite quickly. Uh, but there wasn't really any moments for any 
I like I like big acting. I like acting where you can they have speeches and stuff like that. I don't know. Uh, this movie was good. I wouldn't say it's like the best comedy. I did probably like um, a Buster Keaton movie more, The Cameraman, uh, which also had this type of uh, comedy in it, and I thought it told a better story. Uh, but all in all, this movie was good. I will give it a 7.5 out of 10. Thank you. I hope you have a good day.